Marshfield Community Television is happy to bring you the Ram Report, a semi-weekly magazine devoted to Marshfield High School athletics. We are looking in the rearview mirror tonight. We're fortunate to have with us members of the varsity boys football team, or the varsity football team, and led by their coach, Chris Aruka. And I'm going to have uh, Coach Aruka introduce his players in the manner in which I find that I'm told that he's a, a, an old school wrestling guy. And so I am going to turn it over to Chris. My name is David Snow. Probably should have got that out of the way early. And uh, so, Coach, um, you just completed what would be 2018, 2019, 20 got pushed to 21, and you just completed 21. Um, before we even get to the, to the players, how did that abbreviated season prepare you for 21? Did it help? Did it hurt? Did it? That's a, that's a good question. I think it, it gave these guys some experience, um, but it was, uh, it was a blur. You know, it was yep. kind of like a, a mental grind as I, I sat there the other day kind of figuring out these guys, you know, they played five games in the fall, two. They called it fall two in March and February yep. and April. And then they just played 12 games right in a row as well. That's 17 football games in one, you know, in a, in a year. And from, well, not even a year, you know, from yeah. March to November yeah. for eight months or whatever. It was compacted. Um, and they went right from fall two to a spring sport or, or lifting and then right into the summer workouts and then right into football. And, and they're all dressed right now. You can tell they're not, they're not going out to dinner. They all just got done with their winter sport practice um, or whatever else they do. So it's certainly it's been, it was, it was a fast, fast year. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's um, certainly unique to squeeze that all in in such a short time. So, if you don't mind, in your best uh, <laughs> wrestling, I'm putting a lot of pressure on you here. Uh, maybe starting on your left and we'll yes. roll right through and then we have one that is going to uh, get a special intro when he comes in. Ab absolutely. Um, you know, I was always more of the manager type on the outside <laughs> with the, with the uh, cheap shots or the salt in the eye, but uh, I'm not the announcer, but we'll try. We have Casey Trotten right here. Um, these all five guys are all senior captains. Uh, they did a tremendous job leading the team um, throughout the off season too, and that was another. We got done with that fall two season. We had a great group of seniors last year, and I kept talking to the coaches about how, how great the leadership is. And I thought, mm -hmm. I've never had such good senior leaders, and then these guys just kept it going and, and brought mm -hmm. it up another level. We have Casey Trodden, outside linebacker, strong safety, Pat Yasenko, um, slot receiver, slash running back, um, Ross Olinger, AKA Ross the Boss Olinger, <laughs> if you want a pro wrestling announcement right there. I love it. Or Rouse the Bouse when he gets mad. <laughs> Everybody knows, don't get him mad. He is a uh, right guard for us. Luke McAlpine, sometimes you might see another person around town that looks like him, that's just a stand-in, Matt McAlpine. <laughs> Luke plays middle linebacker, plays, I keep saying, played middle linebacker for us, and yeah. then Sammy Sullivan, cornerback slash safety down there, depending on where the best receiver on the other team was, he was usually following him around the field somewhere. All right, well, Chris, it seems like just yesterday that I was uh, talking to you about on the night before you played St. John's Prep. Yeah. And uh, the Patriots were starting that night, and we had a quick conversation. And the last thing you said to me was that you hoped they got delayed in traffic and had a tough ride in. And um, but you didn't really know what you had at that point, right? And uh, that was a real good test right out of the shoot. I mean, you you were taking on all comers in the early part of the season. Right. Um, how did that first game shape the rest of the season? I mean, it was a, a tough game, lots of back and forth, a lot of scoring. What did you come out of that night thinking that you had in that locker room after you, after I mean, you got home? We, um, in our program, we always talk about competing, whether it's, whether it's lifting weights or <laughs> at practice, in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and these guys all showed that. I, after that night, I mean, you don't want to <laughs> – I'm not saying there's no good loss. Right. But I knew that we were resilient and we would fight till the end. Uh, they're a scrappy bunch, resilient bunch. Um, I don't think we had one player on our offensive or defensive line that was as big as their, right. <laughs> as their smallest guy they yeah. were going against. That was a big team with a lot of fast guys they had, and, and they might have been faster, but I thought our, our guys are tough, man, and they're going to scrap together and fight until the end. And it showed me they were a close-knit group that doesn't quit. 
No, for sure. And you could definitely see in the second half that your team was able to wear teams down almost uh, consistently, you know, particularly in the beginning of the season, you just see it. And you just keep coming at them. And by the, by the fourth quarter, you could see St. John's Prep was stunned. They, I think they had that one wrapped up. They yeah. thought they had it wrapped up. And you guys did just keep coming back. So then you go up to Methuen, tough, tough game on the road. Yeah. Um, must have felt a little better after that one. That was another one. And we, you know, we were down in that game, too. I, I think we, we must have come from behind in more games this year than I think any team I've ever coached has. Usually you get down by one touchdown, two touchdowns, it can be tough. And to us, we just kept, <laughs> there was never a time, even 28 to set, they never think they're out of it. Uh, that's a testament to the kids on the team yep. to just keep playing hard because it's easy to quit. And we talk about easy things to do or quitting, and it's hard to dig in sometimes. And certainly that Methuen game was another one that just showed we had a bunch of, a bunch of guys that were going to scrap for, for 48 minutes. And and like we always say, you know, games are 48 minutes long, and sometimes a better team doesn't win, but the team that plays better does. And, and certainly that, that was a great, a great test for us. They were a Division I team that I think they made it to the semifinal or the quarterfinals of Division yeah. One. St. John's made it to the semifinals of Division I. And, and like I tell them, we're going to play anybody anywhere. Right. And, and I think that's the way to do it. I th that's how I always wanted to be when I played. I wanted to play the best teams and, and see how we stacked up. And these guys did that all year. And, Methuen was another one and yeah I can't tell you you doing the games on TV I can't tell you how many people see him that wouldn't have seen him otherwise and I get text messages or, or emails coach that was a great game I watched you guys not that we have awesome fans that come out every week oh, too. Yeah. We're, we're blessed we're really lucky um, but that was a game I know a lot of people were watching on TV and I yeah. the game gets done and we're on the bus and my phone I look I have like 20 text messages like great game or who's number nine what a great player or yeah yeah not nine, it was six. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. That's <laughs> number nine. So that was, a, that was a good night. Yeah. And so next you had BC High come in, and you guys were about to go on. After Methuen, you went on a roll, right? You, you win nine consecutive games. Yeah. You, you're feeling it. You get into the Patriot League schedule, and you start rolling through. Um, it's got to be feeling good at that point. You, get, you went down to Rhode Island. I skipped that one. Uh, and a tough game down in Rhode Island, but you, you roll through the season, you get ready for the playoffs. Beverly comes in here, made their best effort, you know, ran the ball effectively, a couple of tough runs come your way. But you got on a roll in the second half of that game as well and put that one away. Um, heading into Lincoln Sudbury, what were you thinking going into that? It's a tough squad. We knew, we had heard about them all year. You know, if you watch, if you read, and you know you read uh, Danny V in the yep. Herald or yep. Ventura, yep. newspapers. I don't know if you guys have heard of those, but <laughs> you read about the, the teams. Lake and Sudbury is mentioned all year, and people were saying we can't wait to see LS play uh, Catholic Memorial, and that'll be a great game. And we kind of felt like we were getting forgotten. We had won eight games in a row, or whatever it was, and yep. uh, we knew that would be a really good contest and a tough team. And that was another one where we just had to to keep playing. Another game, we were down fourteen nothing in the first. <laughs> to me, it seemed like 30 seconds. It might have been right. four minutes or whatever it was, and these guys had to had to strap on the strap on the helmets and shoulder pads a little bit tighter and, and dig in for 48 whole minutes. Yep. And that's kind of our mantra. We're going to play all 48 minutes, uh, no matter what happens. We're going to keep going. And these guys bought in, and not just bought in, but exemplified it. And that was right. One of the as a head coach, one of the better football games I've been a part of. Certainly. No doubt about it. The atmosphere in there that night, and all during yeah. the season, your home games, like 2020 was such a weird yeah. time, right, to play in the spring, masks and, you know, parents only, things like that in the stands. To go to the first game, the first game against uh, St. John's Prep, the atmosphere that night and during the season, what, 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 do, you, what do you feel when you, you have all that behind you? Man, we're spoiled. Um, and, and we talk all the time, too, about a, a community. And Marshfield's been, been great to us. And this year we've had, I, I don't remember ever having such great fans at games uh, between the youth kids that show up, the, the flag football kids that show up, the parents, the students, um, the band who comes to games, even when it's not a night when they have to perform, they still, they still right. all show up. Right. So we're, we're lucky. And that's a testament to these guys and what they do around town yeah. and the different community service things that they do where they go and, right. and people become fans by seeing how they interact with people in the community um, and, the, and the youth clinic when they go coach the young kids for a week and it's awesome 
We're, as far as high schools in Massachusetts, we're spoiled. I really think we have the best fans, uh, the best fan support, and it's a great place to be on Friday night. It sure really, is. It really is. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I'm going to just jump to the, to the players. They're Please. sitting here patiently, quietly. They're the program, um, man, not me. It's them that make the program. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna start down the end, Sam, just so because you you know you told me you're a communications professional, so <laughs> we're gonna start put some pressure on you. Um, <clears throat> when you think about the blur of the last four years, right? It, what have you learned? What do you take from all of this, particularly on the on the football field? What do you take from that? I've learned that like all the work that you put in throughout the year it just pays off, and like. We, can never, we, we never gave up. We knew not to give up. And when it came to the fourth quarter, when these teams were all worn down, we just came through and just did what we had to do. It's great. It's great. Uh, and, and Luke, if I can just jump to you with the same question, you know, what do you, what do you take from all of this? So, I mean, Ross, just I'm like, coming to you next. Just like Sam was saying, um, the resiliency, I mean, I don't know if, if any of us would have learned it, learned how to be so resilient the same way if we didn't play football I think that football brought us a great sense of resiliency and I think that that could help us a lot in life and I think it's something that we have that not a lot of other people are blessed to have so good good answer uh, uh yes yeah, so I've always been a preacher of that uh I mean behind the military football is pretty much a, the second most disciplining thing you can do and uh <clears throat> So a lot of the things Coach Ruka and past coaches and mentors have taught us is just to always stay determined, to, to always stay on track. And uh, I think that through our season, you can see that from coming from behind and playing a lot of tough teams that we just don't give up. And we really try those 48 minutes, and it's taught me a lot about never giving up on things that are hard and things that you just need to overcome. It's great. The pressure comes to Pat now. <laughs> the answers get scarce as we get down. Hey, so, hey, so you're going to have to pull one out of the hat here. Um, I credit a lot of to a lot of our re resilience and hard work to the seniors who were before us and the seniors who were before them. So the class of 2020, having all those hardships that they faced in 2019 was a was a really good rebuilding year and stuff like that. And then we built a, built off of it in 2020. The following, like the fall two is what I should say with those yeah. seniors and those guys really just prepared us for the uh, the battle that we were going to face in this year and they prepared us well. Great. Case, don't um, let me down. <laughs> well, I look back four years ago, my freshman year, coming into this program, brand new coach, like who's this guy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's got big shoes to fill. Um, and I kind of I kind of saw what that team was like. Um, it wasn't bad to any degree. It just wasn't it wasn't a high caliber team. Um, as the years went on, we got, we gradually got better and better. And, um, throughout those years, I was always a, the guy, the bottom rung, you know, and I looked up to the guys ahead of me. And I guess what really I'm getting to here is over these four years, I learned what it means to be a leader, both through practice and through observance. Um, we've been talking about the class ahead of us. Those guys really were incredible leaders. They boosted this program significantly. And I feel like if, if they weren't ahead of us, we wouldn't be able to stand on their shoulders and really get as far as we did. Well so. said. Two great teams. It was fun to watch the team in the spring. And, you know, it, it made this fall a mystery, I think, to some extent, what, what you're yeah. going to have out there. <coughs> and uh, you guys stood up strong. So um, I'm going to come right back to you, Sam. Um, what are you going to miss about all of this? I'm just going to miss the brotherhood. Like, obviously, like, you're going to go out in life, make new friends, make, like, families and stuff like that. But <clears throat> you're never, like, going to have anything like football and, like, all the friends, like, all your friends that you made. Like, we grew up with all these guys. We've been playing with each other for 11 years, and there's nothing like it. Just, we'll, like, always be able to fall back on them and hang out with them. It's, it's different. It's great. Luke? Um, for me, more so, I, I kind of missed the scheduling. I mean, I had no time in football, and I kind of feel like it made me prioritize a lot of things more, and now I just have too much time that I don't know what to do with it, and now I'm not as productive, so <laughs> I kind of miss that. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just going to miss a lot of the bonds that I've 
made and I was making with a lot of the players and uh, just uh, all the, uh, like Sam said, we've been playing since we were in second, third grade. So, uh, I mean, there's, we have relationships off the field, but when you're between the white lines, I mean, it's, it's just something else because you're all at war and, you know, you have each other's backs. It's great. Pat? Um, obviously, missing the brotherhood, like they said, but I'll steer off in a different direction. Like, I'm going to miss stepping onto that field for the first time on those home games and being like, this is, this is it. Like, you're going to battle with your brothers, and knowing that the guy to your left and your right has your back is no other feeling in the world. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss that. Uh, all great <coughs> points. But honestly, overall, what's, what's not to miss, you know? Um, of course, everyone always sees the Friday nights, the games, all the glory out there, but they don't see the work we put in behind the scenes. And honestly, I, I eat that stuff up. I love coming to practice every day. I love lifting in the summer. All this stuff that you really don't appreciate in the moment, you think, ah, oh, this, this sucks, you know, it's, it's a pain. <laughs> Is this even worth it? You look back on it. You're you really a trodden for sure. <laughs> <laughs> But you look back on it and, <coughs> and you realize that those were good times, you know. Yeah. So I guess it's all the little things that maybe weren't so great in the moment. I'm looking back on right now and thinking I want to miss those a lot, you know. That's great. Uh, we'll be off the air for a couple of weeks after that, but no problem. <laughs> uh, Chris, just when you think of this group, when you think of both the spring and this group in the fall, do you have a favorite memory of, of any particular game or moment? in those seasons? Um, you know, I, I certainly in fall too, I think we, it was our very first game. Um, and the year before, we were seven and, uh, seven and four, I think. We had an okay season. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember we, but we still weren't like clicking as a, as a full team. Yep. And fall two, our first game at Whitman Hanson, we went out there. Um, and again, it's like, what are we, the kids had stuck with it for the, I mean, they had lifted weights when we were allowed to finally in the summer. Yep. Um, and then they did it all fall. We were lifting outside with masks on. Uh, it, I remember there'd be days it was snowing and we're carrying plates <coughs> outside yep. and lifting weights. And they just kept showing up and kept all yep. winter. Yeah, what's doing, wrong with you guys? Doing all these things, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, these kids, they're busting their butt. I hope, and then yep. we finally get a season. And then our first game gets canceled with COVID cases on the other team. Like, oh my gosh. That's right too. Yeah. So I feel bad for them. And then we get out to Whitman Hanson and we go right down the field and score. I'm like, wow, this team's pretty, might be pretty good. Then on defense, uh, they go three and out right away. And the, and the kids were so into it and, and cheering yeah. each other on so much. To me, I was like, this is what I want. Like, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. what I love is when the kids on the sideline are just as into it as the kids on the field. Yep. Uh, and so that I was like, these guys are finally getting to play and do their stuff and, and, just, and just show everybody right. all that hard work. And then certainly, um, it might, I think this fall was, we had just finished playing um, LaSalle. So that was our, f you know, our first four games were mm -hmm. St. John's Prep, uh, Methuen, BC High, and then LaSalle, who came in second in Rhode Island. Um, right. And we like, took that bus down to, they took, the, some of these guys took SATs that morning. Yeah. Uh, that those got done at 12.30. The bus was at 12.45. The game started at 1.50, whatever time. And so it was just this quick day. And then. We're all getting on the bus after the game, and they were so happy, like seeing their faces yep. after like after that, and and just looking at them. And I was like, wow, this team is. We scheduled those games. I said we could be zero and four. Yep. Maybe we'll be two and two, and then we were three and one, and we lost the other one in the last ten seconds. I said these guys are a pretty special group. Um, no, no doubt about it. Um, so, coming back at you, Sam. Um, your favorite memory. Um, I feel like mine is probably after the Methuen game, just like that first win feeling. And like, not that many people like thought we were going to be good. Like everyone doubted us and just seeing how like excited the whole team was and just like everyone coming together, just nothing like it. Yeah. Luke? <coughs> Mine's got to be the Lincoln Sudbury game. That was probably the most fun football game I've ever played in. I mean, it kept going either, it kept going toward like you didn't know who was going to win throughout the whole game. Yeah. Obviously, we all thought that we were going to win the whole game, but like as a fan watching it, you didn't know who was going to pull away with it. And then we had so many huge plays. Um, Brady's pick, that was awesome. I mean, just <laughs> after the game, I just felt so accomplished. That was the best feeling I've had in my life, probably. That's great. Ross? Uh, yeah, from this year, uh, I think BC High. 
was uh, my favorite memory this year because uh, I we just all played to the best of our ability and we really outshone our opponent and that was that was another one of those games where people just doubted us and they had a lot of good players but we're just a closer group and uh, we're just closer together and all of our players played great and it was just a fun game to be a part of. Well said. Uh, my favorite, I got like two favorite memories really. My f first favorite memory would be the Hingham game where it was Aruka's first time back at Hingham and everyone was like, oh, is he going to beat him and stuff like that? Because Hingham, Hingham's a pretty good team. Yeah, I mean, they made yeah, the playoffs sure. and all that stuff. So going out there and smacking Hingham around was always fun like we used to do back in youth. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but my other favorite memory would be just before the, um, I believe it was the Duxbury game, we all met at the Elks. Every uh, player brought a father or a father figure that they had. And we had like a, just like a family, I guess you would call it pasta party that we had, but it was a family gathering where y'all just had a moment where football was in the rear view and it was more about like the family and the brotherhood that we all had so it was it was good to see everyone together at that point that's great pat thoughtful um believe it or not as far as games go uh this season i, I really like that i like playing in that cm game um of course it was a tough outcome they're a great team but all throughout that week in the defense in the defensive film room um Coach Newcomb, Coach Barnes, Coach Dunn, Coach uh, Boney, they all, they pretty much laid out what they're going to do. Uh, they got their tendencies down pat, um, and we knew if they were lining up this way, they were going to run this. And I just, I felt so prepared for that game, yep. uh, both mentally, physically. And for the in the first half, our defense, certainly, we, we took it to them. And I feel like... I don't know. I just it all. I love when it comes together like that. Yeah. It takes me back to the Mansfield game last year, our last game. Um, it's a great game. Yeah, we hung in there, and it was the same kind of scenario. We knew what we were doing, and that's one of the, the beautiful things about football is everyone thinks it's all physical, you know, but it's really that behind the scenes mental work you do right. that is just it just sets you up that extra level. And yeah. I, I love that. So that's great. Great diversity of answers there, <laughs> um, Chris. I'm going to come back and ask you guys about blocking kicks, you guys on the end, in a, in a second. So just share your secrets. Um, when you look to next year, obviously this is a great group, very mature group, um, clearly pretty thoughtful. Yeah. You're losing a lot of leadership yet again. A and, lot, yeah. And um, you just lost some in the spring, so this is nothing new to you. Yeah. It's part of the, part of the gig. Um, when you look to next year, What's what do you think? What's the outlook? I know you start preparing really early, so. Um, well, it's going to be tough losing nine. I think nine starters on defense, um, and then on offense, I think you know we lose three fifths of our offensive line, our wide receiver, quarterback, and and one of our slot guys. So there's a lot of guys that are going to have to step up and and fill in. And I I hope the younger guys were paying attention. I hope the yeah. kids that are going to be seniors watched the last two years, uh, the two groups ahead of them, and saw just the commitment and the work that it takes. Because it's not easy. Um, and and we're play, we play a tough schedule, and we're not going to stop doing that. Yep. Uh, and, and we're playing teams that have multiple, uh, you know, Division I college players that are going to go on. And this year we, we might have one or none. So we're... Yeah. Certainly, but, but they're able to do it through hard work and, and sticking together and, and being and willing to grind it out. And some, some teams aren't willing to do that, and they were. So I hope that the, the young players we have have, have watched them and, and know what it takes. And there's some good, there are some good individual players there, but you need them all, we need them all to come together to, to compete with, you know, certainly the upper echelon teams on our schedule. Yep. And are you playing medal next year as well? The same thing. As long as yeah. I'm here, we'll do that. That's great. All right? There's not, That's great. We're not going to change. So just on the block and kicks thing, the two guys on the end, fitting that you're on the ends, right? Um, <laughs> Sam, I'm going to start with you. What do you think is the key to block and kicks? Well, it's all on the film. Like Coach Reardon, he goes over all the extra points, punts, and stuff like that. He finds where like the weakest spot's going to be, and he just sends me. And like, yeah, I get all the block kicks and stuff, but like, you got, 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 I got, have to give credit to Casey. Like, he comes in, wipes the guy out, I come right underneath him. It's, 
it's not a one man thing. It's yep. Takes a whole team. Everyone does the right job. We'll execute. Yep. And Casey. Um, Sam said it well. I feel like uh, Coach Reardon, our uh, PBR coach, uh, he goes cook something crazy up, and somehow it works. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you gotta face yeah. him. Um, but then also, it only it takes an athlete like Sam to block all those kicks. You know, so he's just got something different about him, and he always he always finds a way to get in there. You know, so props to Sam. Good all stuff. right. I think he had six this year, and I think he had two in one game. Mm. Yeah. Record. Yep. Yeah, that was a record. record for School record. Sammy saw. That was a little impromptu. <laughs> a statistical move there. Um, so, Chris, I'm going to come back to you. And, um, again, I just want to thank you guys uh, for being so patient and thoughtful and, and good to one another. It's been a pleasure to watch you over the last year and a half, you know, just to see the work that you put in. I remember, you know, doing other sports and looking over and seeing these guys working out in all kinds of weather. Yeah. And was impressed by just what you said, carrying the plates out and committing. You're working out before you've even worked out, right? Yeah. So um, congrats to all of you. I know you're going to have bright futures ahead of you. And clearly, you're much better than your quarterback, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who still isn't here. Um, that's, a, that's a price. That'll come out in production. Um, but Leave that in. in <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Chris, what do you want people to know about this team, this, your staff, and the program itself. You've, you've hit it a couple times along the way, so it's okay if you reiterate something. No, I, and one thing I, I would be remiss without saying, um, these guys all summer organized a, a few different community service things. Uh, and I'm not gonna speak to what it was, because one of the things is, pro is, is a, I'll let them brag if they want to. I don't go around bragging on them enough, I think, in that aspect, is that they mean so much more to the community than just football games. And I, and I don't even know if they know this. I've had people um, send me messages. Uh, I had one woman say, I need to do something special for your team because she gave me something so, <laughs> she enter they entertained me all fall long and they gave the town something great. Uh, I think that's awesome that, that people in this town care about the program. They sure um, do. And what these guys go and do out in the community is awesome. Um, and the seniors too, they did stuff that I've never seen high school kids go and say every single week, we're gonna go and do this and organize it and take care of it um, themselves. And, and as much as I like to, to brag about them or, or try and get Twitter messages out about what they do, I didn't mention that because it was, it, was, it was kind of private. Um, but certainly as a, as a program, I think these kids have all bought in and they, you see right now these answers, I'm spoiled. Yeah, right, for people, sure. People say congratulations to me. It's like, I don't really do anything. I just have really good players <laughs> and good kids that make me look good. So I appreciate that, guys. Thank you. Um, but as, as the, <laughs> to me, the biggest thing is the way that they give back to the community and embrace it. And that's what we try and do as a program. Um, and certainly I'm, I'm fortunate to be in the position that I'm in. I'm really lucky. I have really, really good players again that prop me up. We have an awesome group of assistant coaches. I think they all mentioned a whole bunch of different coaches yep. while they were talking um, that really are the ones that make everything go. You know, yep. I, just, I just sit there and send out a schedule every week and then everybody else um, takes care of it. So I'm really fortunate with the guys that I have around and the things that they've done in the community to get themselves fans, to get people. Like I said, the pe like you said, people that go to the games. Um, I, you guys covering the games, the amount of messages I get of people that watch the games online that aren't there. Again, I'd rather have everybody in the stadium, right, but if you're in South Carolina, there's not really a way to do it. So it's, it's, been, it's been a great ride. Um, and these guys have certainly put the program uh, back on the map and we're in a position where we have to try and keep, keep building and outdoing it every single year. What should we do about your quarterback? <sighs> I mean, one, I think we got to uh, get him a reminder. Maybe we'll tie a, tie a rope around his finger or something. <laughs> so, Boys Sean, can we, bring, can we bring Owen out? Mm -hmm. And we'll give him a quick mic maybe uh, and ask you a couple questions, Owen. Yeah, I got the good chair, guys. Um, <laughs> so, Owen Masterson, uh, senior quarterback, uh, just wrapping up his... Yep. Uh, Was the, uh, the Patriot League keen in MVP. So... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just right. so we've heard, here we've, Sam just hasn't stopped talking since we got here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, Patriot League Keenan MVP, first, second Marshall player to win it. James Griffiths won it last year. Um, broke all of his brother's records 
um, for quarterbacking at Marshfield High School this season in terms of uh, no big deal. Yeah. I Not think single deal. season oh, touchdowns. Hey, right? Would you have the most single season touchdown record at 27 yeah. passes? Uh, completions. Complete. Yeah. That was, that was I don't, was there any other ones? Well, touchdowns in a game. He threw four touchdowns in a game twice. That tied his brother and uh, Steve Ruisi, who played here in the 90s. I, I got a list somewhere. Shaq uh, yeah. sent it to He's me. Got, yeah. I'm not <laughs> that's all I can remember off the top of my head. Yeah, that's so. pretty good, Chris. Yeah. Um, oh, welcome. I'm David. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Um, nice to meet thanks, you too. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, I've asked these guys a number of questions. Um, I will just uh, congratulate you on great season. Thank and you. Um, I, I have a feeling the Patriot League is very sorry they let you guys in. <laughs> um, and, and so you guys represented Marshfield really well in both the spring season, the fall two season, and this most recent season. I'm just going to ask you what I asked these guys. Um, and you didn't get these questions in advance. So. <laughs> Well, I, um, I showed up pretty early, so I got to listen to yeah. a lot of the interview. All right. Well, good. Well, uh, not early. I'm not going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, early in the interview. <laughs> oh, what would you say you've learned just by being a part of this program and part of this team? Uh, I, I mean, I can't even count how much, I, like, how much I've learned. It's almost unspeakable, but, I mean, coming in every day, it's just the commitment that – each of us have given, and Coach Aruka requires the commitment in the off season, the commitment during the season, the amount of hours that you put in. Um, you can tell, like, obviously, I think Casey said it earlier. When you're going through, you're like, oh, it's 6.30 in the morning. I got to go. I got to get Coach Aruka. He's going to be yelling at me. He's going to be making me go through the line. It's 7.15 in the morning. I just want to stretch and lift. Yo, but, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Somehow his voice, he never loses his voice. Even when it's 7 in the morning, he's got a Starbucks <laughs> coffee. Starbucks. He's on the sidelines. Um, but then after the group. season, you look at it, and uh, you like, you go home for the first day, and you're like, what, do I, what, what, what am I doing? Do you take a nap? Like, I'm still not doing homework until later because that's just how I've been wired through football season, yeah. which is terrible. i got to get better at it. But, like, the dedication, <coughs> the time management, it, it – it helps you through every aspect of your life because that's how dedicated you're going to have to be if you want to be good at something, which we were fortunate enough to be uh, this football season. Uh, so it shows you that if you're willing to put in that work and willing to wake up at 6.30 in the morning to yep. go lift and have Coach Rookie yell at you, <laughs> that you will be successful. So, Do you have a moment from this season that jumps out to you? Um, <laughs> I think... I mean, the glaring one is the Lincoln Sudbury win. That was just, uh, it was a whole team win, which was the best feeling about it. Uh, the offense got out to a pretty rough start uh, the first half. We only scored like six points. And the defense kept us in it. They kept us alive. They kept the score close. So that in the second half, when the offense started to, uh, started to roll, they kept up their stops. Uh, we had a huge interception from Joe Corbo that kind of yeah. really sparked it. Um, but going into that game, the underdog and having that whole team win that showed how much we had worked up until that point. I mean, the feeling after that was just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, and what are you going to miss about all of this? It's not going to be Coach Ruki yelling at me at seven in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a theme here. Yeah. Yeah. You, you will miss that. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. He didn't go and have the lift. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe, I, I, maybe I will miss it at some point. I want to say I don't yell at people that show up early. <laughs> <laughs> That's, not okay. That's not true. That's not true. Coach Ruki yells at everybody. <laughs> Nobody's <rough>. safe. <laughs> oh, um, not um, in the classroom. Not, but, in, not but, in the classroom. But it's going to be. It's going to be these kids next to me. And it's wow. going to be everybody um, and Sam behind me. Uh, it's going to be everybody coming in that I got to work. You get out of school, you got an hour, and then you go to lift meetings, and then a two-hour practice, and you got to see them for four hour, hours out of your day, which for a lot of people is more than they get to see their families. Yep. And the bond that that created between all of us, and not just us seniors that have been playing together since third grade, the sophomores and juniors too, um, the bond that really we created throughout the football season I think is what I'm going to miss the most and be able to, able to see everybody every day. That's great. I'm going to uh, just put you on the spot. Um, All right. <laughs> what, what pro or college player do you try to emulate? Or that, that's wow. a tough question. I'm coming big to all one. of you. <laughs> it's a big one. Um, You're going to get the coach. <laughs> Even though I am uh, not the biggest human, I'm 5'11", 175 pounds, 
uh, on a good day. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so I do like to emulate Josh Allen. Yep. Although he might be not this week. A lot though. bigger. <laughs> uh, yeah, not this week. Uh, yeah. I hope Josh Allen has a, a tough week. Um, but the way he's kind of he's got a strong arm, and he can use that to his advantage. But he's also mm -hmm. he can also get out and run the ball, and he's not afraid of contact. And every down, he's a, he's a threat with his arm and his legs. So that's what I try to emulate the most. Very good. Sam? I don't got a mic. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you were just waiting for me. Um, Casey, I'll jump right to you then. Um, <coughs> who do I emulate? I feel like if, if I had to pick somebody, um, I'd probably say I looked, I looked uh, excuse me, look up to uh, Luke Keekley on the, uh, the Panthers. I feel like... He's retired. I know. He's retired. So you want to retire, Case? I want to retire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of this. <laughs> um, no, I just I see the way he plays the game, or he played the game, and um, how he really he brings his physical strength and couples it with his intelligence and um, just knowledge of the sport, um, and he brought those together and really became the best player he could be. And I've always wanted to emulate that in my play as well. Great. Um, I try to, I mean, I'm going to go retired as well. I like to think of myself as like a Wes Welker. I mean, I think I fit that. A little short guy, white guy who can just be in the slot and do whatever you want. But he was also fortunate enough to play with two of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. So getting to play with Owen, who is considered one of the greater <laughs> ones in Marshfield <laughs> history. <now. laughs> I never did that. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's on tape. Yeah. And forever. Forever. <laughs> Getting to pick his mind in uh, film and stuff like that is just like what Wells Welker did with Brady and Manning. So I was fortunate enough to play with those guys. So that's what I'm emulated about. Great. Ross? Uh, I'm also going to have to go with someone uh, retired. Um, <coughs> a big idol of mine is uh, John Hanna. The sure. Hog. Wow. He's a school. That's yeah. great. Yeah, he... Uh, <laughs> I just love the way he played, and uh, growing up, I used to always watch his uh, highlights before games just to get my mind going. And uh, the way he played, um, mm. fast, strong. He wasn't always the biggest guy, but he was the toughest. And yeah, uh, he was very strong and uh, made up for what he was missing inside. So um, I like to base a lot of what I do off of that because he was had a lot of good technique and put yep. his all into every play, and you could really see that. That's a great answer. Luke, a lot of pressure. Um, so mine is actually Bobby Boucher from the Water Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, um, I so he's a senior. Yeah. Coach, Coach Newcomb, Coach Newcomb told me in the year that, I mean, I like to just crash into people um, more than anything else, and it seems like that's what Bobby Boucher also <laughs> likes. To do. And, I mean. Watching his highlight film um, in the in the Waterboy movie, I just I wanted to emulate that. <laughs> Great answer, yeah, Sam. You're, uh, rap, you're rapping it. I want to say J.C. Jackson on the Patriots. Okay. You need a play from him, he gets it, and like not the biggest guy, just comes through. All right, like coach, so you've had a couple Mr. minutes Mr. to think about it. Rick Flair. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what, coach? Yeah. Well, certainly I would want to have the charisma of Ric Flair yeah. if I could. Yeah. Uh, and then for coaches, that's that's a tough one. I don't think about that. I, I wish I could have. I guess I'd maybe have to combine a few if that's okay. If yeah, I that's have, great. Like, the, uh, the positivity of Pete Carroll, always so positive. Yep. I, I wish I could be more like that sometimes. All right. I, I heard the smirks over there. <laughs> <laughs> and then certainly uh, the calmness of uh, like a Bill Belichick on the sideline. I know, I, I said I'm working towards it. Uh, the calmness of that. And then to go really old school would be uh, to have the personal relationships like, like Bum Phillips had uh, with his players or yep. Bo Schembechler, how tight they used to be with their players and yep. really have their players know that they were there for them first. I think that's, the, to me, that's the most important thing uh, right. is that these guys know I am there for them and, uh, and care about them even more than wins and losses. It's great. I'm going to come right back at you and say if you could have one manager from wrestling in your corner, who would it be? Oh, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. No, no hesitation. He was, he was waiting for that. <laughs> he was waiting for that. <laughs> no, I just, come on. Well, he, nobody beats the brain. Sure, that's <laughs> We've spent some time here, so I want to thank all of you for coming in. 
Thank you very and much. And this has been a lot of fun for me. And um, I'm, I should be looking over here, Sean's telling me. Um, <laughs> We want to thank people for looking in. In weeks to come, we're going to do a hockey uh, preview of both the boys and girls programs, followed by the basketball programs, and then we'll be updating as the seasons roll along. And we'll get uh, A.D. Battison here and nice. assorted other celebrities along the way. And uh, I just want to thank you guys. Chris, the one thing I notice is the pride that you have when you're watching these guys. And, uh, you know, I, I just think it's, it says a lot about your leadership yourself. And this has been fun to watch you guys this season. So I, I think I'm speaking for everybody out there when I say thank you to your commitment to the program and thank you for your leadership in the program. No, and thanks we'll, for, uh, we'll thanks for covering us. I think it's great. These guys have a platform every week. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks thank you. Thanks for all the support. Yeah, thank all you. right. We're going to give it a wrap. Thanks for joining. David Snow signing off. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.